Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, A Primer for New Teleworkers. My name is Courtney Brown, and I'm the Southeast Regional Coordinator for the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be your host and question moderator today. Our presenters this afternoon are Lynn Hobbs, Director of the Pendleton Community Public Library, and Jennifer Clifton, Library Development Office Supervisor for the Indiana State Library. So just a couple of announcements. To register for other webinars or other trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov library. For a full list of our current in-person training menu, please see our continuing education website. This session is about an hour, so you'll receive one LEU for the presentation. If you're watching an archived recording of this webinar, instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description on YouTube, or you can also find those instructions on the ISL's continuing education site under LEU policies. For those of you looking for tasks um, and ideas uh, to do while you're working from home, my co colleague Laura Jones put together um, some great ideas on the ISL's blog, and I am putting that uh, in the chat box, a link to that right now. We've also put together a document of work from home tasks based on our conversations that we've had with you guys. So I'm putting a link to that in our chat box as well. In an effort to support all library workers, the Professional Development Office has put together a couple of COVID-19 resource links. We have activities and resources. That link is going in the chat box. And in case you're not in information overload, we've compiled a list of COVID-19 webinars and resources. And that link is going in the chat box as well. So now I am gonna turn the presentation over to Lynn. Okay. All right, great. Good afternoon, everybody. This is awesome. We've got 112 people here. No surprise. This is probably like your 50th webinar over the past couple weeks. So I'm um, glad you were able to join us today for what has become a very hot topic, um, teleworking. We've all been thrown into telework. It's new for so many of us. So we want to kind of talk about some best practices today. And then uh, Jen is going to help out as well by helping us understand what happens when those best practices sort of go out the window, like when we have kids, and I don't have kids, so I'm so glad that Jen is joining us too so that she can address um, what to do when you have kids and you're trying to telework, because I know that's probably a lot of your burning question. So appreciate Jen for that. Um, so I realized actually uh, that I've sort of been a, a fantasy teleworker for um, ever since I was a kid. My dad had an office in the house and I used to sit at his desk and I would put his glasses on and I would read his books and I would take notes and I would pretend to patch calls through on the phone. And, and so this is something that I've kind of, I guess, been cut out for and I've been doing it for years and I've been a huge, huge advocate for it. Um, but I do understand that not everybody fantasized about teleworking when they were kids. And um, some of us just were not into it. We don't know what to do. Um, we don't know how to meet the expectations of our supervisors. Our computers are slow. Our kids are bothering us. Um, how can we get our heads around this new environment of telework? So we're going to talk about some best practices here today. The very first thing that I want to talk about is structure. Um, Structure is really the, the cornerstone to your success as a teleworker, and it's really critically important because without structure, there is absolutely no line between your home life and your work at home life. And for your mental health, you have to have that line somewhere. So structure, ideally, is what should be kind of the, the format of your day. I know we think, hey, you know, we're teleworking now, we're at home, we can sleep in a little bit later because we don't have a commute, we can, you know, maybe not shower and, you know, be a little bit lazier in the morning if, if we want to, but I really recommend against that. I think you should maintain your regular routine like you would have if you were working a regular day. So if you get up and you get in the shower and you walk the dog or you make breakfast for your family or whatever your morning routine is when you actually get in the car and head to the workplace, um, should be the same morning routine as much as possible when you're teleworking because it really just 
sets your mind in in the the set that I'm I'm having a work day. I'm getting ready for a regular work day. So maintain your regular routine, and then really try to set a schedule for yourself. So when do you want to start working? Are you going to break for lunch? About what time is that going to be? And when are you going to stop working? And again, these are really best practices. So it's very easy for structure to be something ideally when you go into the day and within a half an hour, everything has just gone nuts and you've completely lost that structure. But always try to get back to it. Again, it's really for your mental health um, so that you are not blurring those lines. And it really helps to find those lines between work and home. It's also the hardest thing to establish, which is what makes teleworking so difficult sometimes. So my next step when I start a telework day, before I even log into my email, before I um, even look at my computer, I sit down and I do it old school with a pen and paper and I make a list. And I know I'm kind of a nerd here saying lists are your friend, but they, they really are. Um, lists are what are going to keep you on track when all the distractions come in at you. They're kind of your North Star. Um, so before you get started, make that list. And that may seem sort of like a no brainer, but the reason I think these lists are so important is because it can help you sort of get your head around what your day is going to look like and how many distractions you are able to handle. So after you make your list and you can prioritize your list of what you absolutely need to get done or what you want to do in the morning versus what you want to do in the afternoon, but Make it sort of a, a best case scenario. If you had a perfect telework day, what would you get done? And make that your list for the day. And now I want you to take a look at that list and figure out, is it project-based or is it task-based? Project-based is kind of like a door closed day and task-based is more of a door open kind of day if you think of it as sort of a, an office sort of situation. So project-based, means that on your list you're going to have maybe just a couple things but they're a little loftier than you know just sending an email or so maybe you're applying for an lsta grant and so you need several hours to hammer out that application or you're working on staff evaluations and you really really need to focus on something for several hours that is a project-based list and that is a day when you really want to keep your distractions to an absolute minimum you have a task-based list, that's gonna look a little bit more like send an email to so-and-so, call somebody up, make a quick update on the website, little 10, 15 you know, minute tasks that you can do a couple of them, and then you know, maybe you are gonna throw your load of laundry in the dryer or you know, get your kid a snack or something like that. So depending on whether or not you're project-based or task-based, can really help you figure out how your day should look and how many distractions you are able to handle. Jen, you want to add anything at this point in time? I don't want to exclude you. <laughs> no, not yet. Keep going. Yeah, not yet. Okay. okay, great. Well, feel free to interrupt if, if you do. We, we turn this webinar around rather quickly, so um, this is our, our first run through here, so we want to make sure that we're, we're getting each of our, our parts in here. So now that you've uh, sort of established the structure of your day and you know what your list looks like and whether you're going to have a door open day or a door closed day, um, let's walk into your workspace and let's look at your workspace and see, see what that looks like. And let's start with your computer setup. In a perfect world, you have your own computer that you're not sharing with anybody and it's got really fast internet access and it's got all the software you need and you can get to your desktop just like you're sitting at your desk at work. That's a perfect world. Um, many of us just don't have that kind of setup. Our internet is slow. We're sharing devices now with other teleworkers in the house or maybe our kids doing their e-learning. Um, you know, or maybe you just don't have a computer at home or you just don't have internet access at home. And how can you, you know, get through that obstacle of telework? Because you really have to be uh, equipped with a computer because your supervisor probably has some expectations of you to be able to get some tasks done online. So I have heard of some libraries out there that are letting their staff take their computers home with them, even their desktop computers. Obviously that's not something you would do for a day of telework, but since so many of us are in this extended period of time, you know, weeks at a time of telework, 
if you're able to do that so that you do have a dedicated device, um, you know, by all means, go ahead and, and see if that's an option for you. Same thing with the hotspot. If you've got a um, hotspot maybe that you check out to your patrons and there are a couple that are in the building now, maybe you can check those out so that you have a better chance of getting some internet connectivity at your home. Um, maybe you circulate Chromebooks or laptops or anything like that um, that you could get there in the home. So, you know, talk again with your supervisor and say, you know, hey, I, I know you really want me to work at home and, and ideally I would be spending a lot of place, a lot of time on the computer, but I just don't have that capability right now with the situation that I'm in. So it's, it's really important to be honest with your supervisor about what the limitations are so that they're not expecting you to meet expectations that you, you just can't. Um, same thing kind of with the printer and scanner, all of that. Um, if you, again, want to take your printer from work and that's something that you're allowed to do, um, they may ask you to sign a form or something just for internal control so they know where that printer is. It's kind of like you've checked it out, but just see what your employer can do to, to help get your workspace really set up. And then some of your um, basic consumables, I know this, again, kind of seems like a no-brainer, like paper. And I make my lists on paper every morning, and I ran out of paper, like my fourth day of teleworking. So I had to go out and actually buy a notebook because I just didn't have any here uh, at home. You know, you probably have pens, and you, maybe you have paper clips and a stapler. I mean, you don't want to nickel and dime, you know, the library too much for those types of things. But if you're going to be generating a lot of handouts or flyers about, you know, your Wi-Fi connectivity outside or something like that, and you need a ream of paper, talk again with your supervisor that, you know, hey, I don't want to be spending my own money for, you know, the library's work that I'm doing from home, and, and they should be agreeable to working with you on that. And again, that's just because we're kind of thrown into this at this point in time, and we're doing these for long periods of time. I would say if you want to be considered um, sort of in the telework rotation in the future, if this is something that's worked out for you and you feel like you've been really productive up to this point in time teleworking, um, then you probably do want to see if you can get yourself better equipped from home and maybe get into a, a rotation there because it's not um, really the, the library's responsibility to completely equip your home office. Some of that does have to fall on you as much as possible. Ideally, you want to have dedicated workspace. I realize I haven't been flipping through my list here. Um, you want to have dedicated workspace. So if you have an office and the office is dedicated for work and that's where you can be, great. But, you know, maybe your housemate is using that space right now because they're teleworking or maybe you just don't have that kind of space. And so you're setting up on the dining room table or you're setting up on the kitchen table and there's absolutely nothing wrong with teleworking from the dining room table. Um, but I do have some ideas on how to, again, if you're setting up in a place like the dining room table to make it feel like you're not so much just sitting at the dining room table doing work. So for example, um, maybe if you're at the dining room table, don't sit in your regular seat. We typically have our seats at the dining room or kitchen tables. Don't sit in that seat, in the same seat that you would sit at um, to have a meal. Try sitting in a different seat. Or maybe try um, taking the tablecloth off. Just something visual so that it feels like work rather than just um, you know, working from, from your dining room table sitting at home. Because you don't want to feel like when you sit down for a meal that you're kind of working. You just don't have your computer in front of you. Um, if you have something maybe that you keep on your desk at work, like a fun little toy or a photograph or something that you identify with, I have that on my desk at work, and you want to bring that home and put that in your workspace at home, again, to just identify that as workspace, that could work. And even something as simple as your coffee cup. If you are always at work and you're drinking out of your travel to-go mug like I am, when I have coffee at home, I drink out of my travel to-go mug when I'm working because it feels like work rather than my you know, Saturday morning coffee mug, because that feels like Saturday morning and, and home. And again, I really want to keep those lines separate. That is the really, really, really important thing to keep in mind here when you're teleworking for your own good. You really, really want to figure out how you can draw those lines as much as you can. 
Um, but you can get kind of fatigued working in that same location over and over and over, especially in the situation we're at now, you know, days and days on end where we're teleworking. You might sit down and be like, oh, this again. So there's nothing wrong with mixing it up a little bit. Um, if you want to work for a couple hours from the couch one day just for a change of scenery, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you have another room in your house that you could take your, your home office to for just, you know, a couple hours, absolutely fine. Um, I have found, because the library, of course, is closed, and I have been going into the library on occasion, um, I work off of a laptop regularly, even from my office, and I have been getting out of my office, and I've been working in some of the public spaces in the library, like our, our meeting rooms and the nice seating that we have along the windows, and I've just found that to be really um, rejuvenating, having that change of scenery, and it also kind of taps back into my kind of fantasy of telework, you sort of feel... Um, I don't know, just adult or something. I don't even know how to how to describe that. But um, and obviously, this is not an option for us right now. But if you do become a regular teleworker, you know, you can go to the local coffee shop, or you can maybe go to a different public library in the area, or something like that, just to get that change of scenery. Because sometimes you really do need to be rejuvenated in that way. So. One of the luxuries, of course, of teleworking is you're at home, right? It's it's comfortable, it's familiar, you don't have your commute, you know, you don't have to, you know, get in nice dress clothes, although I do recommend, like I said earlier, that you hop in the shower and put on at least clean clothes, but they can be comfortable clothes. So get comfortable, but just don't get too comfortable. So work from a table and a chair whenever possible. Again, if you want to work for a couple hours at your couch there, that's totally fine. But it's not great if you're on a laptop to be looking down like that all the time on your lap. Um, so try to find a, a table and chair and for the most part work in that situation. And just the same way you would in your office at work, you want to um, you know, move around, make sure you have good light, get away from your computer, stretch, walk, um, get a drink, you know, do whatever the, you would do in your regular office that makes you feel comfortable and, you know, rejuvenated. And really don't work from your bed. Uh, it, I know it's tempting and it can be really comfortable, but um, the longer you're in your bed, the more you tend to just kind of slouch down and slouch down a little bit further. And it's, it's not good for your body. Um, and it's also it doesn't help draw those lines at all. Like the same reason a lot of people don't want televisions in their bedroom is because they just don't want to bring those distractions into a space that they feel is really designated for something that should be quiet and restful. So I really would recommend that you not work from your bed as, as tempting as that may be. Okay, let's talk about distractions because this is clearly the elephant in the room, okay? We've got distractions. Um, what I would say about distractions, first of all, is kind of know thyself, know what you can take and what you can't. Again, you've kind of gone into your day at this point knowing if you're project or task-based and knowing what kinds of distractions you'll be able to handle. Thank you, I keep forgetting to flip my slide. Um, so some people can work with a television on. They can, I cannot. So I know that about myself, that I should not have a television on if I need to be really productive. Um, same thing for me for music. If the music is playing and I'm singing along and I'm also trying to type an email at the same time, um, chances are I'm going to actually start typing the lyrics to the song that I'm singing. I can't, that's, that's overload for me. So I'm, I know that I can't do that. So I'm not able to have a television on or a radio on. That is my preference because I know that that's a distraction to me. Um, what also is a distraction to me, but one that I, I can't really get rid of, are the windows of my home. And outside there are birds and there are squirrels, and the squirrels are really cute, and they take these nuts and they sit literally right in front of the windows and they look in at me, and, and I'll sit there and I'll look at them for a couple minutes, and then I realize, oh my gosh, I've just been looking at this squirrel for, you know, five minutes. I know that sounds <laughs> like I'm not real bright, but um, it, it's very easy to get distracted by those things. Small distractions are okay. It's nice to look out the window and, and, you know, get some sun in your eyes for just a couple minutes, just as long as it's not a constant ongoing thing and you find that you've really lost track of what you're supposed to be doing. Um, pets obviously can be a distraction. Uh, so you, you really want to 
want to minimize those as much as you can. Do your best to find a quiet space, especially on those project-based days, and stay there as much as possible. And um, really communicate those expectations to the people in your household as much as possible. So, you know, I know an infant is not going to understand that you absolutely cannot be bothered for two hours and you're going to be in this room and the door is closed, so please don't cry. Um, obviously, you, you can't do that. But for, um, you know, some of the adults in your house or maybe some of your older kids, you, you should be able to reason with them to some point in time and say, hey, I, I absolutely cannot be bothered. Um, like Jen right now, I'm sure she's at home um, doing this webinar and may have had to tell her kids, hey, I'm going to be doing a live webinar, so I absolutely cannot get bothered. Um, so Jen, let's talk about kids. All right. Thanks, Lynn and Courtney, for inviting me to give uh, my perspective. Uh, I think I've my kids have made appearances on ILF meetings and my team meetings, and everybody has seen them and their Legos that they want to show everybody. So um, I think these two images that I've selected for this slide kind of perfectly capture what some of us parents and caregivers are going through right now. Um, when you're working with kids, there's no way to have a normal nine to five schedule. There are interruptions endlessly. And um, the bottom image was from a 2017 BBC interview where a professor was giving a live interview and um, his daughter barged in first. And then while the door was open, his son found his way in. And, you know, that was mortifying at the time. But now that's just kind of how it is. So just for fun in the chat, uh, all of the parents and caregivers Go ahead and type in where your kids normally go during the day while you're at work. Yes, school. <laughs> I think most of us parents kind of assume school is going to run through May. Um, and if before school and after school, there was childcare. And then, of course, you know, in June, we were all hoping that summer camp would start. Well, I know um, personally, the summer camp my children were going to attend has already been canceled. So. I'm looking at um, kind of an uncertainty through August, but um, we'll see what happens with social distancing. But yes, normally we have family we can call on and you know maybe the neighbor down the road who is watching neighborhood kids. But right now, um, since we're all supposed to be staying in place, that's just not an option. So parents and caregivers are now teachers, but they're also the lunch ladies or lunch men, custodians, activity directors, hairstylists, it's crazy. Um, and then on top of all of that, uh, we're still trying to be active employees. So, and then, you know, not every family has the same supports. You know, my husband's in the other room playing Nintendo Switch with my kids right now, so they'll be quiet while I'm doing this. But, you know, there are single parents, and then there are people that, like Lynn mentioned, don't have all the technology. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we're all just getting through this together. So, if you are a parent or caregiver, I just wanted to give you a couple tips. Uh, your priorities right now are, you know, just getting your kids through this. It's really traumatic for them to see the caution tape around their playground and not be in class. So just do your best to model of coping and self-care behaviors for them and, um, you know, minimize the fear by turning off the news. Maybe wait until the kids are in bed before you discuss the severity of what's going on right now. Um, try to keep their routines going the best you can. I know that the e-learning day is nothing like a regular school day, but you can still do, you know, church live stream on Sundays or, you know, dance classes or meeting through Zoom. Just keep your kids a priority and do whatever you can to keep their normal day going. We've been going up to our local school and picking up the free lunches just because the kids really just miss drinking milk out of a carton and things like that. So, um, and then on top of that, depending on how old your kids are, you know, their physical safety, you can't just leave them alone for eight hours a day. You have to keep an eye on them. And then if you've got them in front of a tablet or something, you need to know what they're doing online. So just um, do your best to teach them responsibility, but also uh, they are still your priority over work. And then of course, um, your second responsibility is getting them through their e-learning year. Um, you know, every district has a different plan, but ours is only three days a week and it's two hours at a time. So for the rest of the week, I've still got to find something for them to do that's productive. 
and I know it's going to go on for at least seven or eight more weeks. But um, just, you know, be, uh, <laughs> just know that everybody's going to pass the year and um, there's nothing you will do that'll undo anything they've already learned this year. So, uh, you know, just stay strong and we'll get through this together. And then, so that was my little message for other parents. And I do want to uh, talk to people who are working with parents who maybe it's been a while since they've had young kids at home or um, maybe they don't have kids at all and they don't really understand like why we can't respond to your email within 15 minutes. <laughs> we promise, I think I can speak on behalf of all parents that this was not our choice and it's not something we are trying to do to you. And we just, um, hope that you can extend some grace to us. Uh, it's not a lack of planning or poor time management. It's just what we're going through right now. And we don't need special treatment, but we will need accommodations. Uh, one of the best things I think that came out of this was as soon as I found out my kids weren't going to have school before I could even go to my boss, my boss told me, it's fine. You can work at home or bring your kid to the library. Uh, whatever you have to do, we would consider that a reasonable accommodation. So I hope that, I know we all have different jobs in the library, but I hope that um, supervisors are being lenient and considerate for um, working remotely or possibly bringing kids to work after we return. And then um, just to wrap up, I know that we will not have a normal nine to five schedule. And I do promise that if someone you're working with is a parent in their way, it's not because we're having family fun time. <laughs> it's because you know, we're getting the kids a juice box or a snack or uh, getting them logged into their class for the day or their class Zoom meeting or whatever they're doing. So uh, with all that said, I'll turn it back over to Lynn and Courtney. But um, I think uh, when we get through the end of this, the reward is that we've kept our families and others safe just by being at home with our kids. Great, thanks, Jen. I do see some questions in the chat about kind of what constitutes a, a full telework day and all of that. And we are going to talk about that towards the end. I've got um, just some information at the end that's more from a supervisor perspective, but maybe helpful for people who are not supervisors as well, really um, about communicating and communicating expectations. And your supervisor should be communicating that to you as far as what kind of response time do they expect? Do they expect you to be you know, on your email the entire time that you have your workday and you're going to respond within 10 minutes? Or do they have maybe a two hour response time, you know, to give you a little bit of a pad in there that if they know that you're doing something else or maybe you are working on something else and, and shut your email down, that you're not going to be on top of it all the time. And kind of going back to that project and task-based task model, um, if you are going to be project-based, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to your coworkers that expect you to be connected that day and saying, hey, I'm working on this LSTA grant application and um, I'm not going to check my email again until two o'clock this afternoon. So if you absolutely need to reach me, um, you're going to have to call me or text me because I'm just not going to be on top of my email because I'm trying to minimize my distractions. And then, you know, at the end of the day on a project based day, you will have something to show for it. And before we were all thrown into telework, I kind of had some of my own personal telework rules. And one of them was that you had to have something to show for it. If I took a telework day on a Tuesday, it was because I had a project to work on. And when I was done, you know, if the board ever asked, what did you do? I could say, I, I did this grant application or I, I wrote these staff evaluations. I, I had an actual output. Um, but other rules that I had for myself working from home is, I had to be connected and responsive. I, you know, if someone did call my phone, I did have to answer my phone, um, even if I was working on a project. And um, I would never telework on a Monday or a Friday. And I think those are really hard too, even now when we're teleworking, you know, pretty much five days a week or whatever the expectations may be for you. Monday, you know, if you telework, it just looks like you're taking a long weekend. And on Friday, it's kind of hard to buckle down. So I don't think Monday and Friday are really ideal days for telework, but obviously in this current situation, we don't really have an option there. Uh, email is another huge distraction. Um, if you keep it open and it chimes every five minutes or even more often than that, and the little flag comes out of the corner of your screen and you can read the first few lines and you think, oh, I, have, I can answer that question in two minutes. 
Um, so you want to get back with them and then you've just completely redirected your focus to something else. So um, I would recommend kind of scheduling your email check-ins, particularly if you're having a project-based day, and set a response time expectation for your coworkers and the people that expect you to be reachable that day. So typically, you would check your email first thing in the morning, um, and then at that point in time, close it out. Um, I like to field what I call low-hanging fruit on those emails. So if there's something that's just a quick, you know, two, three-minute response, a yes or no answer, a follow-up question, I'll get those out of my way. But if there's something that's a little bit more of an ongoing conversation or it's going to be several paragraphs or, you know, more than 15 minutes to respond, I have to look something up before I do respond, um, I'm going to put that on my list. And then I'm just going to close out my email so that I don't have those constant distractions of email coming in. Because let's be honest, we get, you know, some of us hundreds of emails a day. And if you think that you constantly have to be connected to those, you're not going to be able to focus on anything else. And then I would schedule check-ins uh, for later on in the day. So check it in the morning, maybe check it around lunchtime before or after, and then before the end of the day. Um, again, if you're task-based, you can have it open all the time and maybe those distractions come in, or maybe you're the type of worker that is just not distracted by your email. When those come in, it's just like, um, you know, they come in every two seconds anyway, so you don't pay any attention to them. So a lot of it is kind of back to that sort of know thyself and, and what your possible distractions are going to be. So um, when you're, you've been distracted and you've been pulled in a, middle, a million different directions and then you think, wait a minute, what do I need to do again today? Well, you made that list, remember? So don't forget to go back to that list. Um, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here. When I was practicing this webinar the other day, my husband was in the house and he heard me say, your list is your North Star. And he laughed at me. He's like, are you honestly going to say that? I said, yes, it is. It is, it is my North Star. Um, so always go back to that list. A couple other things that's good about the list is checking things off of your list is incredibly satisfying. It, it shows that you got some things done and it also documents what you've been doing. So if your supervisor says, hey, what did you do today? And you're like, um, I sent a bunch of email and I read an article and you kind of don't really know because your day was just so crazy and hectic. If you have that list and you check things off that list, you can say exactly what you've been doing. Um, and then, you know, when you didn't get something done off of your list, just put it on the list for the next day. It's okay. There's going to be carryover. You know, the list you made in the morning is not going to be your final end-all, be-all. It is a, an ongoing, ongoing list. You cross stuff off and you add stuff to it. But it really, really helps you kind of get your focus back to where you need to go. It's your North Star. <laughs> um, let's talk about your mental health. Because that's what's really important here too, because we are teleworking every single day for weeks on end and none of us ever expected that. And none of us, you know, even those of us who do like to telework and, and can do it well, it can get to just get on your, on your nerves after a while. So I want to just kind of talk about some things that you can do to sort of keep it real and be good to yourself. Um, the first is just to minimize the distractions of open windows on your computer. Um, this has probably happened to you. You have your email open and you need to respond to somebody, but you need to look something up. And in the course of navigating to whatever you were going to use to look up that piece of information, six other windows, six other tasks on your list have just presented themselves to you because you have too many windows open on your computer. So if you are keep seeing the same, you know, Word documents that you haven't edited or um, articles that you didn't read or whatever, and they're, they're open windows perpetually on your computer, put those on your list and close out those windows. Because that now what just happened is the thing that you had to look up so you could respond to that email, you either forgot what it was or you lost track of it. And now you're not responding to that email for another, you know, half an hour or 40 minutes because all of this other stuff has come into your landscape. Um, and that's, that's not ideal. So put those things on your list, minimize that distraction, and close those open windows. Um, talking is faster than texting or emailing. So if you really have something that you need to figure out with a coworker, just because you're teleworking doesn't mean you can't call each other. So I would recommend calling somebody up and figuring something out to avoid 
a back and forth of emails or texts or messages or whatever that could go on for the better portion of the day. Um, you, you can handle these things within you know, a minute or two with a phone conversation that can take 45 minutes back and forth with emails. So really um, call people. It's nice now in the situation we're in to hear other people's voices. Um, and get some of those things worked out. It's gonna, I think, help your stress level if you can just have those conversations over the phone rather than trying to figure them out. Um, recognize that some things just cannot be done remotely. I mean, depending on what your supervisor wants you to do and what your setup is, um, there may be some things you simply cannot do from home. And you just need to tell you know, your supervisor why that's not, um, going to work for you and and be able to explain why that's not going to work. Not that you just, you know, don't want to do it or you think it's going to be too hard, but um, you know, your, your internet isn't fast enough or, you know, you don't have the, the materials you need at home to be able to do that and see if they can work with you on that. Again, keeping a schedule is really for your own good, but be flexible. Some of the things that Jen said too, it's really easy, you know, for your nine to five turn into the Dolly Parton day there. But the more you don't have that schedule, the more it will um, come in, interfere with, with your mental health, I think. So maybe you're the kind of worker who just kind of has your computer open all the time. And when you hear that email chime, you get in and you check it and you see what it is. And maybe you're kind of done for the day, but you still have your computer on and you're still getting email. And the next thing you know, you are reading email at eight o'clock at night or you're fielding Facebook questions at 1030 at night on behalf of the library just because it's there and it'll only take a minute. It'll only take a minute. Well, you really don't want to be doing that because now, again, you don't have that line between your home life and your work at home life. So really try to stick to that structure and that schedule as much as you can. Um, take walks, open your windows, take breaks, eat lunch, have snacks, pet your dogs, um, all those things that you would normally do on any other day to just kind of help you stay um, happy and healthy are things that, that you should still be doing. Um, I read a suggestion somewhere that said to drink water out of a fancy glass. And I don't have a particularly fancy glass, but I have a fancier glass than I would normally use to drink water out of, and it is oddly satisfying. So just those nice little perks that can kind of help you feel a little bit better about your work at home life, I think is good. Because in the end, it, it is a privilege to be able to work at home. It is kind of a, a luxury to some degree. Um, so you do want to bring in some of those nice um, aesthetic things if you can. Uh, quit when you're done. When you're done with the day, and, and I'm going to talk here in just a minute about, again, the expectations of your supervisor and how to work that out. But when you're done for the day, just be done. Um, you don't have to, now not to say that all of a sudden, you know, everybody should be treated like a, a non-exempt worker because they're teleworking and they they're, can have this sort of nebulous schedule like, oh, I'm done at noon. I was supposed to work till five, but I'm going to be done now. But if you get done a half an hour, 45 minutes early, you know, don't just sit around and, and try to spin your wheels. If you're done, you're done for the day. And, and if you've been productive and you've gotten some things done and you've got some things to show for it, I would hope that your supervisor would, would understand that, that you've made a best effort. Because really, that's a lot of what this comes down to, especially those of us who are not typically teleworkers, is you are making your best effort. So it's okay to end a little early um, and just really try not to go too late. And then um, a final thing I think for your mental health that's good is clean up. Especially if you are working at a dining room or kitchen table, don't leave your folder of work stuff just on the corner of the table. Get it completely out of your landscape. When your day is done, you put that laptop or Chromebook away, you put your folders away, and just you know reclaim your home and, and get back to, to your home life and just kind of forget about work at that point in time. Um, I do want to talk a little bit um, to supervisors out there a little. Um, and, and again, if you're not a supervisor, some of this may be helpful because a lot of it comes down to communication. So supervisors, I, I hope that we're all being flexible with our staff and understanding that some people's jobs just do not lend themselves to telework. If you are working at the front desk and your job is typically to register patrons for library cards and check out books and put them back on the shelf and you're not in the library, what are you supposed to do? And you might be nervous about not knowing how to fill your time. And if your supervisor has not been clear on how to fill your time, 
you may not want to have that conversation because it seems scary. You think, boy, if I tell my supervisor that um, I'm not able really to work at home or I don't really have anything to do, I'm afraid they're going to, to let me go. I'll tell you right now, there's nobody out there who wants to let anybody go. I think we are really trying to avoid that as much as possible. So it's better to be honest and help us to find things for you to do. I've got some of my staff um, sewing masks at home. I know some of us are doing that or um, donating blood or picking up trash or around the library or whatever they can do just because I know that they cannot do their regular job from home. But um, if they're not able to do those other tasks, I, I get it. So really try to be understanding, try to encourage that schedule of your staff, that structure in their day. But again, be flexible and understand that sometimes that's just gonna go out the window for one reason or another because everybody's home life is different and it has, has their own challenges. Um, don't necessarily expect your staff to tell you what some of those challenges are. They may be personal in nature. Um, just try to understand that this is a, a difficult adjustment for a lot of us to make. Um, and, and I think it's really important to have these lines of communication open between, you know, supervisors and their employees so that you, the supervisor knows what you need as an employee to succeed as a teleworker. Um, I am giving my staff teleworking logs. And so I just want them to record, you know, what are you doing? How long approximately is it taking? What resources are you using? Um, who are you working with and what do you need? And I am um, spending a lot of time myself looking at that, what do you need? Because if, if someone out there on my staff uh, is stalled in a project because they don't have a login or they don't have access to something or they need to stop by the library and pick something up, um, I want to be able to, to make that happen for them. So that teleworking log has been really, really helpful. But what I found when I first gave it to them to fill out is they were being really super detailed, like to the point of even recording bathroom breaks. I don't want that level of detail. I don't need to know what you're doing every minute of every single day. I just want an overall kind of what you're working on. So I think a lot of teleworkers are nervous and, and maybe your supervisor is, I don't know, but I think most of us have been pretty flexible in these situations, but a lot of Workers are nervous that their supervisors are really looking at their schedules and wanting to know what are you doing every minute of every day because I'm paying you. It's not so much that, it's wanting to stay um, connected, wanting to know what you're working on. And again, really trying to um, emphasize that structure is important. It's not because we necessarily want to see you fill every hour of every day that we're requiring, which ideally we would, but again, we're understanding, um, but just understanding that, that things don't always go the way the way we think. And, and again, the more you talk with your supervisor, the more honest conversations you can have, because if you don't have these conversations, I think it can encourage staff to be dishonest because they're nervous. Um, maybe they're not filling up their entire day, but they're saying that they are. And so you would rather be honest about what you can do than um, you know, pretend that you can meet expectations that you can't. Um, I, I think that's gonna get you in, in a little bit more, more trouble there with all of that. So those are kind of my, my words for supervisors out there as well, to really, to, to be understanding and, and be flexible and, um, you know, try to keep people working as best we can in these very, very odd times. Um, that's really about all I have for today. Um, Jen, did you want to add anything before we toss over some questions? No, I did see a question that came through a lot earlier in the presentation. Um, Hannah wanted to know, if you're trying to fit in a workout during the day, what's the best time to do that? So um, I thought I could take a shot at that. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I've been doing uh, just to kind of keep myself grounded normally. I work downtown and I can go over to the gym at lunch and I can't do that right now, but um, my trainer does post workouts during the day. So um, if I can make her morning workout, I'll take a quick break and go do that. But otherwise, um, catch it after work. I don't think there's really a, a set rule. Um, obviously work comes first if it's during the work day, but um, you know, I, I think whatever you did before you can do now. Right, yeah, I think, you know, if, if you would take a run in the morning before you would go to work, um, 
now you maybe have just an extra half an hour that you can sleep in because you don't have a commute, but you can still take that run. Um, but depending on what exercise does for you, if it exhausts you when you're done, you know, maybe you don't want to do it first thing in the day, or if it really energizes you, maybe you want to do it late in the afternoon because then you might kind of get your second win to, to finish up your afternoon. So depending on, yeah, when you would normally exercise and, and what, how it makes you feel and when you might want to fit that feeling into your day, I think should kind of dictate um, where you go with that. I did see um, a question there. Somebody wants me to send along the telework log. So um, Courtney, I'll go ahead and send that to you when we're done here. If you want to send that along, you're welcome to do that. I can send that along with the um, link to uh, the, pre the presentation recording. So we can get that out to everybody. Um, let's see, we have some questions. Jen got the first question. Thanks for doing that, Jen. Um, we did have some questions about um, what a full day is. And I think that you addressed that pretty well. Lynn, but uh, Jennifer asks, are you requiring staff to do something every day? So I know we're all making kind of local decisions. Um, personally in Pendleton, what we're doing right now is my professional staff and my programming staff, I want them teleworking basically 80% of the time that they would normally work from home with the understanding that that's not always possible. But I you know, looked at everybody's job before we started making telework assignments and I said okay so this is what the librarian does the librarian can still order books from home the librarian can still field ask a librarian questions on the website from home and just trying to come up with some reasonable expectations for people that really don't have work that they can do the ones who are you know making masks and just you know being valuable in different ways um, I do expect them to check their email I am still putting out a schedule of when people are sort of technically on the clock. Again, because I don't want to, if I've got a question for somebody, or if, even if I just want to touch base with one of my staff, I don't want to call them on a time when they're not expecting that call. So it's not for me to necessarily keep them accountable, but it's also for me to know when I can reach them at a reasonable time. So I, I do keep a schedule. And then we're also using a, a tool right now called Discord. And it's one, our teen librarian actually got us set up with it. I think it's something you use more for video gaming and, and doing you know, live interactive video games, but it's been really great for us. So we can check in um, via text. You can, with the click of a mouse, meet at the, the water cooler and talk back and forth. You can share documents. You can do, my um, teen librarian has actually done webinars training instructional webinars using discord for my staff and it's been great the other great thing about it is when we're on the clock we can see who's on the clock if somebody needs to step away you can put a status on there so like right now technically i'm checked into discord but i'm unavailable and my status says that i'm presenting a webinar so discord has been a great thing when people are sort of on the clock as a way for them to keep in communication and and, and check in. Um, so we do have the expectation, not necessarily every single day, but if I have a part-time person that I having a hard time finding work for them to do, who's typically scheduled Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I want them checking their email Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and at least logging into Discord and reading some of those conversations so they know what we're working on. I see, I see. Uh, some people are saying they've used Discord. There's also Microsoft Teams. We have Microsoft Teams here at the State Library. So we've been using that to have face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. And um, the Professional Development Office uses the chat feature. And we stay in touch with each other pretty much the whole day. And that really makes it um, easier. Uh, let's see, Union County uses Slack to keep in, in contact with each other. Uh, this kind of goes into a question that I have um, so for whether there's people who kind of miss working with other people or maybe ex who are more extra extroverted. Do you have any suggestions on how to tackle that kind of feeling lonely or isolated if you don't have these kind of tools? So 
I am trying to at least call some of the staff that um, maybe are feeling a little bit more isolated. I mean, I know who lives alone. I know who isn't putting in as many hours because of the nature of their job. So just having those phone call conversations just to touch base, I think, has been helpful. Um, and, you know, talking about Discord or Slack or whatever you're using, you can have a lot of fun with that. We have a couple different like chat room sort of stations, whatever you want to call them. Um, one is, you know, what are you reading? Uh, what are you watching? Um, fun pictures of your kids and pets. And so we're also having a lot of fun on Discord and not losing those just fun social connections that we have. Um, every morning, one of my processors, she puts up a funny like good morning meme of, you know, various things that are always just really amusing that I think some of us kind of look forward to seeing what, what Candace puts on Discord for her good morning meme. Um, so you can have a lot, a lot of fun, I think, on Discord as well. And so that, that can help people who might be feeling isolated is to, to get back to that fun. Of course, Zoom meetings are helpful. Um, my staff, we do a tea time every Thursday. And now we're doing um, Zoom tea time, which is a purely social hour. It is not work. It is just, you know, what everybody's up to, checking in, um, and, and we drink tea. It's all very posh. So if you have questions, go ahead and stick those in the chat box. Uh, Lynn and Jen and I are going to stay on uh, the presentation, but I'm going to switch over to this LEU pod. Um, so there are two files there in that top pod in the middle of the screen. The first one, the telework LEU certificate, um, is your LEU for this presentation. And then the second one, ISL COVID resources, those are all the links that I mentioned um, in the opening of the presentation. To get those items, you just need to click on them to highlight and then click download files. If you have any issues downloading either one of those files, please feel free to send me an email. I can send those things to you. Um, via email. My information is in that contact box at the bottom of the screen. Um, Lynn and Jen's contact information um, is there as well if you have any follow-up questions for them. Um, I want to thank Lynn and Jen both for uh, putting this webinar together very quickly with a very fast turnaround. Um, again, keep typing in the chat box if you have questions. We're going to hang out here for a few more minutes to see if anything else comes in. Um, and then we will sign off. Yes, we will send out a recorded link uh, for today's program along with uh, the resource link and um, Lynn's uh, something. What was that? Telework. The telework log. log. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you've, I hope you've learned something. Um, I see there's another question there about um, being motiva motivated or energized at home. That's a really, really good question. I'll be honest, I, I sometimes kind of poo out at around three o'clock. It's hard to get back into it. That's one of those times I think it's good to step away, um, go for a walk, do some stretching, have a snack. Um, you know, if it makes you feel better to watch a little half an hour sitcom or something in there, if you don't think that'll get you too, you know, refocused into something else, you can try that. Um, I think the same things you would use to get yourself motivated for a regular day's work or motivated to do something you don't want to do anyway, you know, clean in the kitchen, whatever, um, try to use some of those same techniques. Heather says, it's easy to be non-productive, but I find as soon as I sit at my desk, I'm good. I'm the same way. As soon as I sit down, I'm ready to work. Um, if you're having issues with your LEU certificate, please email me. My name is Courtney Brown. My email is there at the bottom of the screen, and I can get that to you. If you have any issues downloading the LEU certificate, email me. Um, it looks like we're having trouble with one of the links, but Laura Jones is putting that in the chat box. Um, any tips for outreach hey, Courtney, staff who have no, um, let me come back to that. I just want to say something really quick too, back to the motivation, the motivating factor. Um, 
<laughs> you're, I'm really beating a dead horse here. But the list can be a really good motivator too because crossing something off of a list is awesome. So if you can um, do some of that low hanging fruit, you've got two quick emails that you need to send and you can do those and you can cross them off your list. Um, that can be a really good motivating factor too because you feel like you've made some progress and you wanna keep, keep on making progress. Um, outreach staff with no internet. Um, you know, I guess no internet is a trick and it depends on do they not have internet because they just live in an area where they absolutely cannot get it or is there a way that you can possibly get them internet access via a hotspot or, you know, even something that they could possibly, you know, upload from a Wi-Fi connection in a parking lot somewhere that they could work on kind of like the kids are doing with their Chromebooks if they don't have access. You know, they're uploading their assignments and then working on it somewhere else. Um, but again, just being honest, of if you don't really have anything for them to do, take a look at that, um, those resources that Courtney sent out earlier, because there are some things, you know, attending webinars and reading articles. If they're writers, maybe they can write blogs, or um, if, they're, if they're artistically inclined, maybe they can make flyers or something like that where they don't need internet access. Um, but again, if, if you're their supervisor, just be, be flexible with them because they're probably worried they don't have anything to do and they're afraid, um, you know, for the, the, the safety of their job. So do whatever you can to reassure them that you're going to really try to work with them and keep them busy, um, you know, if that's obviously something you, you can do at this point in time. Oh, it looked like her connection dropped just when I started answering her question. Do you have um, contact information for Courtney or Courtney for um, Alexandra possibly? Yes, I can get that information. Okay, that'd be great. I'll reach out to her individually then. I don't have anything else. I hope everybody stays safe. I hope you can um, enjoy telework a little bit. Try not to be um, so super <laughs> stressed about it. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to um, communication with your supervisor and just what their expectations are and, and what you really feel like you can get done and just try to get on the same page. I think we'll put, put both of you at ease, both of your, um, your boss and yourself.